Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another episode of The Real Men of Real Estate. My name is Thomas F. Chappelle Jr., your host. I am the organizer of the Black Inland Empire Real Estate Investment Club. I want to thank you again for tuning in. Um, have a very special guest. I know I say it all the time, but this guest is very, very special to me. Uh, we have a mayor of Eastville, am I pronouncing that correctly? Everybody say my my accent is a little crazy. Eastville, California. Um, my first of many mayors that I would definitely have. So I want to thank him for taking the time out on his busy schedule to come and talk to us and let us know about who he is, uh, what he does, as well as what is the next thing going in Eastville, and why should you go ahead and live in Eastville. So here we have Mayor Todd Rigby, the mayor of Eastville, California. Welcome, sir. Hey, Thomas, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. You know, with, with the, the name of the city, East Vale, it's one of those things that I always tell people, uh, with any word that you have tough tough time with, you say it fast enough and no one's going to even catch it. So it's, uh, it's East Vale with a V-A-L-E at the end. I so, appreciate that. Glad so, to be here. All right, thank you very much. So here's the thing. We're going to go ahead and get started. Um, want to know a little bit about you before we talk about you being a mayor and the things that you do. Let the people know who you are and what's about you and, and go from there, okay? I'm going to start with the first and most important thing to me. I had someone that uh, sent me an email and they they replied back to the email and they're like, oh, you know, I addressed you by Todd. I'm sorry. You know, it's Mr. Mayor. And I said, no, I'm Todd. My name is Todd Rigby. First and foremost, I'm a father. I'm a husband. I have three beautiful children that I enjoy. I'm uh, my my kids are in youth sports and I'm very passionate about sports. So I coach referee, do all that fun stuff. Um, so that's kind of a, a little bit on my personal side. Um, I've lived in East Vale for about uh, 15 years. My wife and I moved out here when our daughter was about six months old. And then uh, we added two to our bunch, and, and that's where we're at right now. Um, Profession-wise, I'm in real estate. I'm in uh, residential as well as we do a little bit of small and commercial real estate, small commercial real estate um, as the sales as well as on the property management side. And I'm sure we'll get into that a little bit, but I'll I'll let you uh, kind of pick some questions and ask me about what, what you want to know about that. But um, I, I'm i on the city council and I have the opportunity to serve the city of Eastville as the mayor currently. And it's one of those things you asked my wife when we first got married, if she would ever imagine me being in politics and she'd be like, there's no way, you know, Todd wants nothing to do with politics. But it really got to the point that as I started to focus on my kids and my family and started to realize what a great community that we have here in Eastville. And that if I could be a little part of continuing to make it great, make it a great place to live, work and play, that I jumped on that. I jumped on that opportunity. I ran back in 2016, uh, had a successful campaign and I've been on the, the city council since. This is my second term as the mayor in the city of Eastville. We have what we call a rotational mayor system. So every year in December, we do a reorganization and kind of give all of our council members the opportunity to serve as a mayor. So, uh, but again, I'm glad to be here and that's just a little bit about me. Okay. So one of the things that um, would make me, a, um, I'm going to use this term a little loosely attracted. The fact is that you're a very spiritual man and you don't find too many people that, especially in politics. I mean, we play, play that part, but you take that very, very seriously. Could you expound on that a little bit, please? I absolutely do. I, I'm a strong believer in God. I'm a strong believer in, in that I have a Savior who is Jesus Christ, um, especially uh, today being Sunday. Um, it's it's our day of worship. Um, but I'm, I'm a strong believer that through God is truly the reason as to where I'm at right now. And let me share with you just a, a little experience about that. You don't see, like you said, Thomas, you don't see that a lot in politics because we've gotten to a point as a nation that our nation was founded upon was founded with God in, in mind. I mean, it was, it was really, that was one of the key components um, in God we trust. And we have gotten away from that as a society. And it's very disappointing to see. Uh, I had our council meetings are one of the very few council meetings that start with a prayer. And as long as I'm here, we're going to keep doing that. And one of the things that I appreciate is, is we have different uh, pastors or, or leaders of different congregations within the area, they come and they perform that prayer for us uh, at the beginning of our council meetings. 
and sometimes they get busy with their, their schedules. It is known on the council that I am a strong person of, of faith. And so anytime that that person didn't show up, they always reverted to me. Hey, you know, <laughs> council member Rigby or Mayor Rigby will, will say the prayer. Um, and I, I love that. And I appreciate taking that uh, opportunity to be able to pray at the beginning of our meetings because we make some crucial decisions. And whenever I, I'm a, again, I'm a strong believer that when I have to have a crucial decision, it's not just Todd making that decision. It's Todd and God making those decisions. And I need that influence. I need that, that help to be able to make sure that I'm making the right decisions. So uh, I'm a strong believer. Like I said, I, I really wish that as a society that we could bring God back into our lives. I have the opportunity this Thursday to speak at the national day of prayer where we, we again get together and we have an opportunity to pray as a community. And that's really what we need. We really need to bring, we, we wonder why there's so much turmoil, why there's so much heartache in, in society right now, because we've taken God out of it. We've taken God out of our lives. And it's just, it's, it's sad to see. And it's sad to see our kids have to deal with that also. Well, that's true. Because like I said, when I went to one of your council meetings, that was the first thing kind of impressed me that you guys sat there and prayed. And I'm like, wow, that's kind of amazing. Now I end up, um, meeting another mayor, uh, Mayor Malcolm out of uh, Hemet, and I'm working alongside with him on some things as well, and he's a very, very strong believer. So it's, 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 it's enlightening that I can meet the same type of people that has the same type of uh, motivation to bring that element to and not be afraid to speak about it. I mean, that's one of the things, you know, and when you get into a certain position, have a certain title, a lot of people don't want to speak about it because they don't want to offend other people on what they think and what they believe in. It's, we all have created different. We all in the same boat, going to the same destination, but taking different directions of getting there. So I do appreciate that, and that's why I want to point that out. Now, as far as Todd is concerned, you know, um, before you uh, end up embarking in, on real estate, what were you doing before then and before you even got married and had kids? Who are, who are you? Was you an athlete or, or what? So I, I have been an athlete in my, I guess you would say your past lifetime, right? You know, <laughs> as an adult, we, we try and relive those athletic dreams through some of our kids sometimes. And that's what I've done with, with coaching. I, I remember that my playing times are long past, um, but I did grow up playing soccer. I remember as a kid, we have, there's six kids in our family. And I remember as a kid that we would spend from sunup to sundown on Saturdays at the soccer field. I remember this green ice chest that my mom would pack. I mean, I still remember it like it was yesterday, uh, but my mom would pack this green ice chest and we'd be out on the soccer field all day. So soccer was our family's passion. We loved it. My kids continue to play it now. I grew up playing soccer. Um, I, I also grew up playing baseball and football. I just, I, I love sports. I just really gravitated towards sports. Um, so I played in high school. I played soccer, football, and baseball. And then uh, in college, I ended up playing football just at a local junior college. And it was just a fun, fun experience. Um, just a, a great opportunity to be able to continue to play a little bit in college and, and enjoy that. Um, after college, I so my dad's a general contractor. And kind of growing up, it was one of those things that, hey, if you want a buck or two to go spend and, and do whatever you're going to do, you got to come clean my job site. My dad <laughs> taught me a great lesson. He taught me a great lesson that you need to earn what you, what you get, that everything can't be given to you. And I know my dad, he could have given me a couple bucks here and there, but he just, he really wanted to teach me a principle of hard work and working for what you have and appreciating what you're given. And so with him being a general contractor, that was one of the things that I thought, you know what, I want to get into this. This is kind of fun. This is a fun opportunity, but I want to get into more of like the development side, management side, um, you can only do so much hard work, you know, digging ditches, you know, hitting the hammer on the nail. Uh, you can only do that so long. And so that's why I decided to go to go to school and to further my education. So like I said, I went to a junior college, went to Santa Ana Community College, played football there for a couple of years. And then I transferred to BYU up in Provo, Utah. Um, and then I, I got my uh, business degree or my I'm sorry, my uh, facilities management degree with a business minor. And then I came back home, worked with my dad for a number of years. And then I've always had, I had a kind of a, I don't know, just a, I think it's every child's dream to either become a policeman or a, or a fireman, right? You want right. to go out and save the world. Right. So um, I explored that and I ended up uh, going into law enforcement for a couple of years. And then I enjoyed it. Um, 
just didn't work out for me. And so I realized that, you know, there's, there's other, once again, going back to what God wants for me, there were other paths that God had me to go. And it, um, the, the disrespect that we're seeing in law enforcement right now is one of those things that my dad always tells me, he said, you know what, you made the right decision. You know, there's, there's so many officers that are out there that are putting their life on the line. It's just, it's a tough, tough job right now. So um, when I got out of that, I was, I had my, I went back to school or actually while I was um, in law enforcement, I went back to school. I got my master's degree from Azusa Pacific University in human resources, organizational development. And so I worked in human resources on the corporate side for a little bit. Okay. And it really hit me when I had to go to a corporate meeting and miss one of my daughter's very first award ceremonies in kindergarten. And that hit me. And I said, okay, is it worth it to have a nice, good corporate job? Or I've always wanted to get full-time into real estate, have a more <laughs> flexible job, or do I go that route and venture into real estate where I can be a little bit more flexible and I can be there for my family uh, because my family is, is my top priority. So I did that. I took the jump and it's hard going from a salaried position to a self-employed position. And so I, I took that jump and it's been a blessing to my life. It's allowed me again, the opportunity to serve on the city council. It's allowed me to be there with my family, to, to coach, to be involved in all that they're doing. Um, one of the things that I, I really enjoy is I have the opportunity to take my daughter to school. She's 15 years old. And I, I know that gets to the age right now that a lot of the time, like, dad, I don't want to be around you, you know, <laughs> typical teenagers. But I have the opportunity and I, I don't take that lightly that I, I take my daughter to school. There's some days that I'm not able to because of other other things that are going on. But that's my my time with my daughter. I mean, as simple as it is, it, we, we don't even talk about anything. It's just, hey, how's it going? Okay, love you. Have a great day. Um, but that's important to me. Okay. And in a corporate job, I can't do stuff like that. Okay. So Mayor, I, I enjoy what I do. Mayor, we're going to end up taking a commercial break and we're going to jump back into uh, that as well as how you got started going into the real estate sector. So uh, we're going to take our first commercial break. We'll be right back with Mayor Todd from Eastville, California. This is the Mail, Real Men of Real Estate, hosted by me, Thomas F. Chappelle Jr. Thank you. Thank you. 